Next on BYU Sports Nation, scoring on every drive. Are you on board with BYU quarterback Zach Wilson and his expectation to score on every possession? We have a fresh 10 and 10 on the top receivers and tight ends the Cougars will contend with this fall. Plus how UConn football and basketball could join BYU's future schedules. And the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell, on his fall camp MVP watch list. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by... The BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play back in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store. As always, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday, July 30th, wherever and however you're connected. Wonderful to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a man who can only be summed up as the synchronized diving coach of BYU football tight ends, Jerem Jordan. When Steve Clark asks me to do something, I'm going to do it. So last night in the perhaps final kind of hangout before, uh, you know, it, it gets going with fall camp, which starts tomorrow. We'll talk about it in a second. The tight ends were swimming at somebody's house. I wish it was my backyard. It was not. Uh, but they had a synchronized trick shot here that ended up in an alley-oop and a dunk that really worked out. I, I thought it was great. Nine tight ends are listed, by the way, and here they are. Uh, you know Matt Bushman and Ronai Lauluputitel. Other dudes, Kyle Griffiths, Nate Heaps, Darius McFarland, sort of hybrid fullback tight end. The dunk was good, very nice. Uh, Lemmy, uh, Alema Pilimai, Isaac Rex, Hank Tui Peloto, and Carter Wheat. That's a good group. There's hey, some good young tight ends in that hey, group. And if you don't have a hoop, just have somebody hold their arms out like a basketball hoop. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, if you can afford that pool, what, what, where's the hoop? It's like, you know what? That hundred bucks or whatever, we can't we can't well, do it. Well, maybe maybe you <laughs> don't, go? maybe you think it's an eyesore because there's so much beauty there. You don't want a basketball hoop a attached basketball to hoop, that pool. It would be the greatest thing you have in the backyard. <laughs> That's one of the greatest <laughs> inventions of all time. But clearly they don't want it there. Put up a peach basket. <laughs> I don't then. think money's a problem. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Apparently they just don't yeah. want it. Let's synchronize today's show lineup. Greg Rebell. What's his number one fall camp storyline of interest going into practice number one tomorrow? The top 10 wide receivers and tight ends BYU will defend against this season and the latest BYU volleyball star to return from a world tour with Team USA. Heather Knighting joins the program. And now for a tour of your BYU Sports Nation headlines. Today marks the official start of BYU football training camp. The Cougars' first actual practice goes down tomorrow, but today is report day, which means, Jerem, swag handout. It also means this for the countdown. The countdown to the youths. 30 days. 30 days away. We said essentially a month yesterday. Now it's just straight up a month away. 30. Let's go. 30 days. Let's go. Shout out to Brian Mitchell, former Junior- number 30. Junior defensive back Austin McChesney announces via Twitter he's retiring. McChesney missed uh, some of 2016 with torn ACL uh, in a game in which he had an interception against Cincinnati on the road, and then he missed all of 2018 with an injury. Uh, Best of luck to Austin. Uh, His younger brother Jackson is perhaps an impact freshman back from a mission on this According to Mitch Harper of KSL Sports, three-star junior college cornerback Eric Ellison, who signed with BYU last December out of Mount San Jacinto College in California will not enroll in classes at BYU this fall semester. That's a bummer. Three-star corner, JC guy, ready to play, make an impact. I, I thought he'd be in the mix to play a bunch at corner, so that's a bummer. Now the plan is for him to become enrolled in winter semester so that he can join BYU for spring football and then get involved in the mm-hmm. 2020 season. Brendan Sander and Price Drummond are on the 12-man USA national team for the Pan American Games in Peru. Gabby Garcia-Fernandez is on the Puerto Rican team. Competition begins this week. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Well, what do you know? QB1 for BYU football making headlines once again. And he revealed a quote quite a while back. We saw it in an article from Salt Lake Tribune and Jay Drew yesterday saying, and I quote, Shoot, I expect to score on every drive. Jerem, 
Is it a realistic expectation for BYU to score on every drive? I can't believe I'm actually asking you this question, but no. let's do it. This is one of the dumbest questions we've ever asked. Yes. Is it realistic to expect them to score on every drive? No. What, are we stupid? No. No, but it's, it's okay that he says it. Yeah. Expect, you expect to be great. Do I expect to miss a single shot when I, when I shoot in basketball? I'm, I'm expecting that ball to go in. If it doesn't go in, I'm not shocked but I'm expecting the ball to go in. That's fine. Whatever. BYU ranked in the top uh, fifth in the 50s last year in, in points per drive and whatnot, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. In 2018, BYU ranked in the 50s in points per drive, points per play, and offensive efficiency. Okay. So I think BYU probably needs to get into the 40s. Uh, and maybe the high 30s to expect to win eight plus games. Um, BYU needs to be more explosive. BYU needs to be better on first down. BYU needs to throw on first down a little more. I think I've given the receivers a bit of a hard time, mm. and it's not been completely their fault. Partially, sure, but let's talk about it. Tanner Mangum for a year and a half uh, was, and he was hurt part of 2017, but just wasn't good enough. That team wasn't good enough, right? And then the first part of 2018 with the new offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes, BYU was kind of slow out of the gate, right? Um, BYU started to do some nice things the back half of the schedule with Zach Wilson where he got more comfortable. The coaches got more comfortable with Zach. I think BYU won't score on every drive. Shocker! But I think that they'll score on more drives than they did last year, which is the goal. What do you want him to say, people? What do you want the quarterback to say? Ah, uh, well, you know, I think we're really hopeful that um, we can score on some drives and be uh, pretty good. He what? chose to say every drive, though. He didn't have to. Well, what, what do you want him to say? Do you want him to run up there and be like, well, we're probably not going to score on this drive, but. That's kind of a superlative, though. He went to a superlative. Yeah, I expect so. well, he, he could I- say, listen. We expect to be much, much better. He didn't have to quantify it. He chose to quantify it with something. Right? Well, I have zero issue with him saying, I am confident, and I expect that we will go and score on every drive. You should expect that. Why are you playing if you don't go out there and expect to do something good given the opportunity? It's like you said, when you shoot the shot, you expect to make it. I don't declare to everyone that that's my expectation. You just though. did. No. You just did on Be- the air. Because it's a topic we're discussing. I didn't bring it up independently. I don't know what the question he was asked. Whatever. They're not going to score on every drive. But if they score on more drives than last year, fantastic. Will they score on every drive? No. But should you expect to go out there and do something productive and good every he said time? Score. You should expect to score every time you go out on the field. Why are you playing if you don't expect that? Like, I, this, is, this seems normal. I don't know why people are having such a hard time with this. It is normal to expect it. It's not normal to say it. Why? Well, what's the difference? Why does it matter? Because you don't have to say. The, why does it matter? Uh, I think it, it obviously matters to you. You're getting riled up about it, right? Well, <laughs> yes, I, I am. I'm, <laughs> you're telling me that if there's this big difference between saying it. Yeah. And I, you don't thinking have, it. You don't, have to, you don't have to say all of your major goals out loud um, to everybody uh, per se. You can say them to yourself, those closest to you, right? If you say all of your goals all the time, it's like, okay, now I know too much about you. There's, there's, it's good to have mystery. Like in horror films, you don't reveal uh, the, the terrible character, the, the monster. You, there needs to be some mystery there, right? It's... He said it. Whatever. They're not going to score in every drive. It's a, it's a faulty goal and expectation. It's a, it's a good attitude. Sure. Yeah. 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 Whatever. I, Who cares? I, I, this, I, is, this is probably the dumbest question we've ever asked on this program. <laughs> in f- how many episodes? 1,600? We're getting there. Is it real? No. Come on. <laughs> Topic two. Today's players report to camp. Tomorrow's the first practice. At the end of it, we shall declare a fall camp MVP, a Do tradition that no one else does or cares about. Here's our official BYU Sports Nation fall camp MVP watch list, by the way. Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, ah, yes. Matt Bushman, Lopini Katoa, Tython Williams, Gunnar Romney, Zane Anderson, and Diane Gonwoloku. But the question is this, who shall win it? It's going to be Zach Wilson. And here's the thing. Typically you would give the nod to the backup quarterback because he's the most popular guy on campus. Oh, yeah. By Everybody far. loves the backup quarterback. And he hasn't done anything wrong yet. Exactly. 
But Zach Wilson is coming off of shoulder surgery, and he's going to impress. People will watch him and say, oh, he looks really good coming off of that shoulder surgery. I feel confident in BYU's abilities. He's going to get the majority of the reps. Zach Wilson will be the fall camp MVP. He benefits from coming back off of that energy, the injury. rather. If he wasn't coming off of injury, then it would probably be Jaron Hall. But I think there's so much interest and intrigue with Zach Wilson. He's going to pull all the attention, more attention than Jaron Hall, and he'll do great things, and he'll be the fall camp MVP. Jaron Hall's got them muscly arms. I think people are going to have a football crush on Jaron Hall. Uh, they already kind of do. We, we had one, right, in spring. He had a great spring, had a great spring game. He was the spring MVP. I think Jaron Hall will be the fall camp MVP. Because I think we expect Zach Wilson to be at a certain level, especially because it's been you know seven full months since the, the surgery. So we're expecting him to be pretty close to what he is, right? So if he does well, it's like, well, that's what we expect. You're the starter. You're the 18 for 18 guy. You're the, you're the 12 touchdown, three pick guy. Jaron Hall, I think, is going to show us some things, um, and perhaps not at quarterback completely, some other position where we go, wow, and that adds some value. Yeah, I, I think Jaron Hall is the front runner for the MVP because of that backup quarterback status, a la Christian Stewart. What was it? Uh, 2014. 2014. We're like, dude, see, Stu's the man, and he had to be the man later um, in, what, eight starts uh, later that season. So I think Jaron Hall's the guy. If it's not a quarterback – I think it's probably a running back, and it's either Lopini Katoa or who I think BYU fans want it to be, Tyson Williams. I think BYU fans want him to steal the show. It's so easy for the running back to look better than they are in full camp because they're not actually tackled. So they go by these arm tackles, and they sprint up the sideline, and everyone's hooping and hollering, and it's like, wait, he would have been tackled right there. It always makes me laugh. So, like, a guy like Kairos Tonga can have little to no impact in a fall camp, in my opinion, because when they go 11 on 11 and a guy runs into the line, you don't go, oh, wow, Kairos Tonga blew that up. You go, you focus on the offense, right? But, yeah, ha- have eyes at other things. It's hard to quantify, like, how good Brady Christensen will be. Maybe he is the best player in fall camp, but we wouldn't actually know it. We learned this morning, Jeremy, as we move on to topic three, that the UConn Huskies, now independent in football, are going to have an interesting time filling a schedule for next season. Welcome to the club. BYU has gone through this, and BYU typically has kind of lended this hand of friendship to teams that have gone independent, like UMass, which is why the Cougars scheduled a four-year deal with UMass. And Liberty is now on the schedule for BYU. So, is a possible UConn hoops game, if BYU can leverage it, Enough of an incentive for you to want to schedule UConn in football moving forward. This is the second worst question on the show today. (laughs) Of course, (laughs) yes. Yes, that would be awesome uh, because playing uh, UConn in men's hoops, awesome. Women's even better. Um, The UConn men have actually struggled the last couple years, but traditionally they're good. That's a football game BYU would win every time, right? And they did a couple years ago when they played a pair. Here's the issue. 2020 is full for BYU. 21 is full and 22 has a spot. How long will UConn be an independent? Yes is the answer uh, to this question, but I don't know how long UConn's going to be, Andy. Yeah, I, the thing is, if BYU can leverage this into some basketball games, great. And I'm sure that Tom Holmo will be trying to I wheel and deal all of this. UConn probably gets asked this every time they schedule a football game, by the way. Hey, can we, uh, can we throw a women's hoops game in there? But if of UConn... Course. For UConn to get BYU to come all the way back to Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut, it's, that's a journey. Okay? Oh, BYU does that every year with a, some program they shouldn't. You know what I mean? BYU does it. They're going to do it with UMass, Liberty. They did it with East Carolina. That don't matter. But BYU already has those teams on future schedules. So is there room for UConn? Like for BYU to squeeze another one of those trips into the same season if they're already going back east? It's not a team that's going to have a 500 record, so... It can be a win. Is this a game you want? Then? Yeah. yeah. This is, is this a, the game yeah. you want? No, this is one of my four to six winnable games. A UConn. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Would you do it even if basketball wasn't in the mix? Sure. Whatever. Really? Yeah. See, t- for me, I want something else out of it. It's like, hey, UConn, we're going to throw you a bone. We're going to play a few football games with you, but you need to come to the Marriott Center and play it, some basketball games. Oh, it'd be nice. BYU's done it for way less, so why not? 
Okay. Yeah, try and leverage. Like, if you're going to play at UMass in Amherst, Massachusetts, if you're going to play at Liberty in the unbelievably named Lynchburg, Virginia, yeah, you'll go to UConn. <laughs> right? How's that a name of a city? I don't know. What? I don't know. I hope, uh, sure hope it was after a, a guy. Now, the reality is it's, it's not probably thing. not going to be in the next few years because BYU essentially has full schedules. Yeah. Unless they move something around. That's why I'm wondering. You don't move around for UConn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it'd have to unless be like you get three. Hey, would you move things around? We'll give you basketball games if you can fit us into the 2020 or 2021 schedule. Sure. Now, and UConn's now probably some... desperate to fill 2020, 22. Yes, yeah. The, the first schedule is the hardest. Ask Tom Homo about that. Yeah. Our question that of the day: schedule stunk, and we only oh, won ten goodness. games. <laughs> huh? <laughs> our question of the day. <laughs> I can't believe this is our question of the day. On a scale <laughs> of one to ten. Okay, how confident are you that the BYU offense can score on every drive? Not will score on every drive, but can score on every drive. (laughs) Taylor Twelman, after the U.S. didn't make the World Cup, what are we doing? What are we doing? (laughs) Let's cut a voice to the nation. Do we have to? (laughs) This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At right. Tolminator on Twitter. Three, three of these biased yes. responses. Tolminator says, I'm right in the middle of a five. <laughs> Until I see it on a consistent basis, it is hard for me to have a high level of confidence. Hashtag offense unknown. Hashtag BYUSN. Five is a high level, Tolminator. The last five time, is a high the level. The last time I think I felt confident that BYU was going to score every time they went on the field was in Taysom Hill's junior season in 2014. Like when they went on the field with Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill and Mitch Matthews. I was like, okay, thought, yeah. Okay, they, they probably are going to score. They're yeah. probably going to score. Yes. But there was that confidence. Well, it's nice when you have an NFL quarterback and NFL running yeah. back, right? And before that, That's it nice. was 2009 and 2008 when you Max Hall the and Dennis Pitta and the Harvey Uma here. and Austin Colley in 08. Like th- those were the type of offenses where I thought, they will score every time they get on the field. Yeah. But guess what Maxall didn't say? <laughs> oh, coming, I'm sure, I'm sure coming, he said it at some point. Not in the media. <laughs> coming up, who are the top receivers and tight ends? A new 10 and 10s on the way. Plus, Greg Rebell, the voice of the Cougars, joins us in studio. B, what are his top fall camp storylines? Number one and number two. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest BYU Sports Nation right now, it's Jeff Judkins versus Mark Pope in a shootout. I wonder who's going to win. Check it out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. My money's on Juddy, buddy. Live from Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. If they're jump hooks, I have Mark Pope. Like that, drop that, steps? That's about the only thing Mark that Pope. he could... Uh, Winning against yeah. Juddy, right? <laughs> Juddy is the best shooter see. on campus. Yeah. Joining us now, a guy who will always shoot his shot on the airwaves, Greg Rebell. Just a guy from Alberta and one of our favorites. Welcome back to the show, Greg. Hello, guys. Good morning. One month it's, away from football. Uh, you mean one day away? Uh, practice is tomorrow. This is very... Yeah. I, yeah. I know it's practice, and I get excited, and then it's like, okay, we have a couple weeks. But it's exciting that we're the offseason is over. We're talking about practice. Not yes, a game. We are. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. Yeah, uh, and, and I guess uh, um, it, it's a good thing that no matter how old I get, and I'm getting really old, um, there's still uh, a stirring, you know, at this, at, at this time of year. You know, it feels good to know that we'll be out there watching actual football and, uh, and noting alignments and, 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 and formulating our own personal depth charts and memorizing numbers and all these things <laughs> that go into getting ready for a season. I love it. There's jersey math. Like, you remember John, it, John by the way, on. did this? Yeah. Where it's, it's like, oh, so Lee Kamard minus uh, Eli Herring is whatever. Doing yeah. that in my head all camp yeah. long. Yeah. Uh, on a, you did another interview this morning. I'm just reading on Twitter. Greg Rebell says getting to eight wins would be indicative of a successful season for BYU. Do, you, you feel like that's, that's uh, a, a lot? Well, I, I actually think that, that playing in a bowl game means you've been, I've had, a, had a pretty good season with this schedule that, that they put together. And, and eight wins is more than seven, which so means you, you progressed from last year. So those are all good things. Yeah, I mean, we all want more. Uh, you know, uh, it, not, not that you're setting your bar super low, but I think if you just get to the postseason, you've been a pretty good team with this year's schedule. And then beyond that would be great. Yeah. I, I think we've, we've said the goal, yeah, is eight plus. 
And then the stretch goal is like crazy, like 10. Right, which yeah. would be crazy. And, and really, and we'll be able to see just how crazy it is after, we, after you get through those first four games. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's more than a four-game schedule, but there's a lot of reasons that, that those first four games carry the weight they do. Um, you, 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 you don't have to read a whole lot about each of those programs to know that beating any one of them would, would be an accomplishment. Yeah. When you go into SEC country and, and beat anybody, you've done something good. And, and I think Tennessee is going to be better than they were last year. I think the quarterback is legit. I think that the money they spent on those coordinators means a lot. Um, USC is always USC. Yeah, they may have underachieved, but this should be a bounce-back year for them. It's an important year for Clay Helton. Daniels is a real deal at quarterback. The wide receiver crew is scary good in terms of talent. And then Chris Peterson's got it going at Washington. And we all know that Utah is you know legit. What are they picked to win the Pac-12? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, if, if, if you're any good, it's going to show up in those first four games. Then you can start thinking about, well, what, just how good can this team be? But let's see how those first four, uh, four weeks go for sure. Greg Ravel with us on BYU Sports Nation. Going into fall camp, what are your top two storylines specific to BYU? How soon does Zach Wilson look like he's Zach Wilson again. Like, 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 look, look, he's full go. And I guess we have to also consider the fact that when he last played, he wasn't maybe full go. He was playing injured as it was. But, uh, yeah, how soon will it look that he's got, you know, kind of the reins off? And, and there's always going to be that temptation, uh, I think, quarterbacks with that injury to maybe um, go faster than they should, quicker than they should, and just how quick they will let him do that, I guess, becomes a question. So that, that's a big one. Um, and then uh, – uh, I, I just want to see um, how the running back reps get uh, get parceled out a little bit because I really do think that Lopini Katoa is legit on his own. I think it's great they've added depth with uh, with Tyson and with and with Emmanuel Supa coming in, but I, I think Lopini Katoa kind of earned a right to be considered a go-to guy last year. We didn't necessarily maybe see him, you know, at, at, at his full uh, prominence. Uh, he only played 11 games and, and had some injuries and wasn't a starter for for all those games he played. But BYU loved to get him the ball. And when he got the ball, he made good things happen. Had a really good touchdown to touch rate. And so uh, how, how, how the running back situation sorts itself, I think will be uh, sorts itself out, will be interesting to see. And then also maybe if I could throw a third in, uh, and these are all offensive. I, I know that, you know, defense should not be ignored. Uh, but I, I think defensively they'll be, they, they've proven they can be solid, right? I think in, if you take out the two seven, 2017 year, BYU is ex- we do. We've ex- deleted it. expected yeah. to have a top 25, you know, total defense, scoring defense type mentality. I think they've got that, that schematic uh, uh, mindset down. But the third thing offensively would be um, how tight that wide receiver, receiver group becomes, or rather how mm-hmm. compact that, 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 that rep formation becomes. Um, if go-to guys really emerge, you've got a tight group of guys that way. I'm wondering about the receivers, too, because the last, I guess, Tanner Mangum wasn't the same dude. And, and so the play from that position wasn't quite what we were hoping for a year and a half there. And then we saw some progress uh, through the air a little bit with Zach Wilson, right? So perhaps the switch at quarterback changed that. We, we'll see. Zach Wilson said, um, I believe on media day, that he wants to score on every drive. No doubt. Who doesn't, right? Um, BYU was ranked in the 50s in points per drive, play, offensive efficiency. How much of an improvement do you expect this year in that regard? Well, they should improve if they're better where they want to be, which is in explosive plays. Explosive plays will help all those numbers you just mentioned. And that's one of the things they really want to focus on this year is more chunk plays. Um, not, not that you're going to disregard establishing the run, but they need to be a little more explosive than they were. And, and we talk about receivers, wide receivers. We can't ignore that the main receiver has been a tight end the last couple of years. That's okay. Uh, BYU's had leading receivers be the tight end, and they've been really good in those years, not, in, not, not too recently, too. So um, I'm okay with Matt Bushman being the guy because he's the guy you want to have the ball in his hand. In fact, if, I think he needs to be even utilized more than he has been. Yes. Um, and, and, so, uh, and he's a guy that, as a tight end, was averaging, what, 16 to 18 yards a catch last year. Led the so, nation among tight ends. So he can be explosive yeah. from his position. And why, you know, here's something to think about. BYU may not have a lot of mismatches at running back, they may not give you a lot of mismatches at wide receiver, but they do give you a mismatch at tight end. You have to exploit that, obviously, right? They, and they know that. Uh, why would you not want to go to that guy? Because he's the one area on, on the field where he does give you a major offensive mismatch. Um, and Jeff Grimes just raves about Matt Bushman's ball skills. And, and um, you don't have to be the world's greatest blocker to be a really productive tight end. And, and, and there are a lot of really productive NFL tight ends that aren't blocking machines, but they are pass-catching machines, and they help you win games. And I, I look forward to that from Matt.
Greg Rebell, the voice of the Cougars with us on BYU Sports Nation. Who is your fall camp MVP front runner at this point? Because it's watch list season. This is a big deal wow. for us. Is We always name a fall camp MVP. We, in fact, we made a watch list for this. Really? Do you want to know who's on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's who's on it. Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, Matt Bushman, Lupini Katoa, Tyson Williams, Gunnar Romney, Zane Anderson, Dain Kawulaku. That's our watch list. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go uh, one offensive guy and one defensive guy. I'll go Bushman Tonga. Oh, Ooh, okay. Tyrus Tonga. Okay. Not on your watch list, it's by the way. It's harder in fall camp to see the value right. of the line. But, but, but you can still, you can still blow up enough stuff and clog up enough holes <laughs> to be noted. And so I, I, I'm, I'm going to watch uh, Kyrus Tonga in, in fall True. camp. Hope he has, and, yeah, health, 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 health. You just cannot have enough of it on a football team. And, and it's the worst thing to hear about injuries in fall. It's the worst thing to hear training camp injuries that, that are significant, keep guys out for weeks or seasons. It's the worst. I, I just you know, always hope and pray that, that they can get through a camp healthy at the most important spot. So, yeah, I just hope for health. There's one position who's always the front runner in the fall camp MVP, though. It's the backup quarterback <laughs> because the starter is expected to be solid. And then the, if the backup does anything, we go, <laughs> hey, look at it. So Jaron Hall is the front runner in my mind. And it's interesting to see the coaches have been kind of hinting at, yeah, let's find a way to use him and whatnot. I guess I'm a little nervous in that he's one play away. He needs to be ready, right, uh, and focused on that. Yet he's too good of an athlete perhaps not to use in some other capacity. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I, I first and foremost want uh, the number one guy to be the number one guy as long as he's healthy and productive. And, and, and Jaron Hall's time will come at some point. And, and not everybody uh, ha- has had three or four years as a starting quarterback at BYU. We've had some really good ones have just two and sometimes just one. Um, but uh, I, I, I never want to see a guy ascend to a spot because the guy ahead of him got hurt if the guy ahead of him is really good and deserved that spot to begin with. Um, but I just think it's, it's not a bad problem to have, to have two athletes of that caliber at the same position right now. Um, I, I know Jaron will be ready if he's called upon, but I hope Zach Wilson's ready to be the guy because we saw how special he could be last year. Yeah. The Yukon Huskies recently went independent in college football, and an idea was put out there from The Athletic this morning that they could probably show up on BYU schedules because it makes sense. But maybe BYU leverages not just a football game, but gets some basketball games sure, in yeah. there as well. What do you think the possibility is of seeing UConn on future football and basketball schedules for BYU, given the Huskies' current situation? Well, I think, I think it'd be a pretty easy deal to do, wouldn't you guys? It, you know, to say if you want to get us on the football schedule, let's work a, a basketball deal too. Um, I don't know why, why UConn would be opposed to it by any stretch. It'd be great to get out there and play that program. Um, that's a basketball program, right? Men's and women's. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it, fantastic. Unfortunately, BYU appears to be booked the next two seasons, 20 and 21, and then 22 has like one spot. So I don't know how long UConn's going to be independent, but it'd be awesome. Well, yeah, and it could be, a, I mean, it, it could be kind of a longish haul because where would they go, right, um, from where they are right now? You'd almost have to drop down back to where they were almost. I, I don't know that, that, that if they join a conference at this at this rate. Yeah, TBD, is, is right? Is that the vibe, that, that they would join it, somebody it, else? At some point, I, I wonder. Yeah, mm. in, in football, uh, who knows, right? BYU's doing it. Can UConn sustain it? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Matt Bushman was on the Walter Camp watch list. That's a notable one, and it's 40 players. That, that's top player, right? Just yeah. Top overall player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we were like, hey, that's pretty cool. One of two tight ends, one of 40 players in the country to do that. Um, I know the watch list are what you want to make them, but that seems like a significant preseason nod to Matt Bushman. That's great. Yeah, it shows just uh, just how impactful he can be. Uh, and you know, now he's one of those guys. I mean, after college, in college, you are eligible after your junior year, uh, you know, to to, to, to hit, hit the NFL draft. I'd love to have Matt for four years. Um, but um, he's the kind of player that I, th- I think has uh, you know probably some pro potential, and these kind of things only help him. Yeah. Greg, it's great to talk to you, man. Yeah, here we go. I can't believe it. We're, we're one month away from a game. And to Going Jared's to point, tomorrow. when the interview began, we're talking about practice. Which is more than not talking about practice. Yeah, yes. I like it. Like, yeah. Actual I'm practice. In. I'm in. Yeah. Actual practice. Tomorrow we'll be there. So. All right, man. Awesome. We look forward great to Great time. Yeah, crunching. we'll do a lot more of this, I'm sure. Okay. Thanks, Greg. See you guys. Coming up, the Women's Volleyball National Freshman of the Year and Team USA U20 member Heather Nighting tells us of her travels overseas. And Jerem's 10 and 10 wide receivers and tight ends. Who's the top pass catcher on the list? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation 30 days out from BYU and the football season opener against Utah at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. One day away from practice number one. We just spoke with the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell. Download the podcast to hear who is the clear leader 
in the running backs room and why Greg thinks that way. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Today marks the official start of BYU football training camp. Cougars' first actual practice again goes down tomorrow. But today is report day, which means they get that drip, Jerem. All that swag. Gotta, Gotta have it. Junior defensive back Austin McChesney announced via Twitter that he's retiring. McChesney missed most of 2016 with a torn ACL and then all of 2018 with an injury. According to Mitch Harper of KSL Sports, three-star junior college quarterback Eric Ellison, who signed with BYU last December out of Mount San Jacinto College in California, will not enroll in classes at BYU this fall semester. His plan is now to enroll in winter semester classes of 2020 and be with BYU football during next spring and the practices involved there. He was expected to be an immediate impact guy this season, so the defensive backfield depth takes a bit of a hit. Brendan Sander and Price German are on the 12-man USA national team for the Pan American Games in Peru. Gabby Garcia Fernandez is on the Puerto Rican team. Competition begins this week. Everybody loves lists, and we've got the next top 10 for you, courtesy of Jerem Jordan. He's stepping away. 10 from lists his... in 10 weeks. It's Jerem, 10 and 10. Yes, it is, Spencer. We are anxious to get to it. Thank you for stepping away from your synchronized diving and coaching there. It's time to go. Well, it is uh, my wide receivers and tight ends the top 10 BYU will face. Number 10. Mitch Guller, wide receiver, Idaho State. They did it. He's the only Bengal represented on any of these lists. He's an All-American FCS player. He had 20 yards per catch last year, nine touchdowns, 62 total grabs for 1,200 yards. He needs 225 yards to become the all-time leading receiver in school history. He'll be 27 this November, which is a huge advantage. Wait, what? He played minor league baseball for five seasons. A couple of things. One, don't sleep on Idaho State. And two, he's the best receiver that the Bengals have had since Madison Mangum. There you go. Nice drop. Number nine, Mitchell Wilcox, tight end South Florida. The senior nearly went pro last year after a first-team all-ack season with school records of 43 catches and 540 yards. Both would have led BYU, by the way. Wow. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, what? Number eight, Antonio Gandy-Golden, wide receiver, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. The Gandy man can. Back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Last season, he put up 245 at Nuevo Mexico, 205 at UMass. Second most yards per game among returning pass catchers on BYU. Life, Liberty, and the pursuit of touchdowns. Every time we talk about a Liberty player, I just get more and more worried about when BYU has to play a road game against Liberty. They are a sneaky team. They've got a, a good little trio, right? They'll lose a couple of these guys before they play at Liberty, though. Number seven, John Hightower, wide receiver, Boise State. Explosive receiver, eight touchdowns on 39 touches last season. Six plays of 40-plus, 16 yards per catch. He's got to be uh, he's playing against Dian Gawolikou, most likely. Cannot wait to watch that matchup. And then Dian will intercept it and run by a kind of skewed, curvy line down the sideline again? Well, it's, it, it's in Provo, <laughs> so the sideline will be pristine and perfect. Yes, next year. Number six, Britton Covey, wide receiver, Utah. As a sophomore, he had 60 catches for a team-high 637 yards. Tore his ACL and meniscus in the Pac-12 title game. Dynamic in space, good kick returner. But will he be ready for August 29th since he tore his ACL and meniscus in December? Yeah, that's the thing. I, Britain's a good player, and I keep asking myself, why is he not at BYU? But I don't know how much of an impact he's going to have because... BYU will be his first game back. That, that's a tough situation. Number five, Marquez Callaway, wide receiver, Tennessee. Led the Volunteers with 592 yards, 16 yards a catch, and two touchdowns in 2018. Went for 50-plus in seven games last season, including two for 98 against Missouri. This dude is a baller. Admittedly, I'm very concerned about what BYU does against him in Knoxville in early September. Most of the teams BYU will play this year will have one guy that you got to keep an eye on as a wide receiver, right? The uh, the Hail Mary against Kentucky was a huge play. Number four, Randall St. Felix, wide receiver, South Florida. 21 yards a catch was eighth in the country. 679 yards total, four touchdowns. He had six grabs for 165 in the Gasparilla Bowl. Stretcher of defenses. He could be USF's first 1,000-yard receiver ever. What did you say? Fix it, Felix. He's that guy for USF. He might fix that offense that, well, that team that lost six Six in a row. Six in a row. Yeah. Actually, seven in a row. Yeah. Number seven, or number three. Where? Amon Ra, (laughs) St. Brown. I love this name. USC. 
This uniquely named receiver had 60 catches, 750 yards receiving, three touchdowns as a freshman. At Texas last year in his third game of college football, had nine grabs for 167 yards. Went 10 for 94 against a playoff team, Notre Dame, to finish the season. He's one of two NFL receivers on this USC team. The second, I believe, will be coming up shortly. Well, they might have three. I left Tyler Vaughn's off the list. He could be on this list. Number two, Aaron Fuller, wide receiver, Washington. 5'11", 183-pounder, led the Huskies, 58 catches, 874 yards, four touchdowns. Put up a hundred in four games, notably against Auburn, Utah, BYU, and UCLA. Top 10 in the pack in receiving yards and yards per catch. Say hello to Jacob Eason's best friend. And the top receiver, BYU will play in 2019, is Michael Pittman Jr., wide receiver, USC. Pittman led the Trojans with 758 yards, six touchdowns. Led the Pac-12 with 18 and a half yards per catch. Top 10 in the other two. Went over 100 yards in three of the last five games, including six for 155 and two scores against Colorado in October. Can he lead USC against BYU in that perceived trap game? Can Because the wide receivers for USC are easily they're, the best in the Pac-12. They're the best group BYU will face. Yes. This year, by far. Oh, what wide receiver and tight end. Yeah. USC's loaded. At, they're always loaded at wide receiver, right? I only had two Trojans on this list. I could have put Tyler Vaughn's on this list, um, who's really good. He had 115 for 1483 the last two years. He's good. So why do we think BYU has a good shot to beat USC again? Just because, because of the it's, placement it's, of the schedule? Well, someone has to snap the ball and throw the ball. <laughs> and they have to defend, right? Okay. Because USC went 5-7. and seven. Yeah. yeah. With those numbers, they still want five and seven at wide receiver. Wild, right? How yeah, about there, that? There are actually three sides of the ball. How about yeah. that? All right, let's keep it rolling. Coming up, which BYU soccer player received a golden boot? And how Heather Knighting's experience with Team USA and the under-20 squad will impact the BYU women's volleyball season in just a few weeks. She's in Studio B. This is BYU Sports Nation. National Freshman of the Year, man. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you don't catch the show live, no worries. Show's on demand on iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play, BYUSN.com, video, audio, whatever you want, whatever speed you want, audibly, whatever. You got it. Have you listened to us in 2X? Yeah. How does it sound? Amazing. (laughs) Uh, half, Half speed is really funny. On any podcast. Yes. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> Try. Try. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation with Jerem's favorite question of the day ever. Right? Yeah, this is the greatest question we've yeah. ever asked. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, this based off of Zach Wilson's comments, <laughs> the BYU quarterback. Saying, we'll score in every draft. How we confident are expect. you that the BYU offense can score on every drive? At Wigmanti underscore eight on Instagram says, after fall camp is done and I can see that Zach's arm is 100%, then I'd say a seven. <laughs> How do you quantify this? Like, what is a seven? What is a five? What's a three? I don't even know. That 50% of the time I don't, they I don't, score I don't on know. every drive? They scored on not that. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's weird. <laughs> you can join the conversation if you dare. Yeah, Hashtag we BYUSN. We, we asked a question. We, yeah. we, and we have a lot of responses as well. Joining us now at Studio B, fresh off her tour of the world, if you will, with the under-20 USA women's volleyball team is Heather Knighting, back for BYU Volleyball. Welcome, Heather. What's up, Heather? Excited to be here. First time in studio, right? Yeah, that's my, it's my first time, yeah. We didn't have you in the entire season last year, and you were the <laughs> national freshman. That's, a, that's our bad. Is okay. it, or it's is it your bad. fault because you had class? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you go to class? Yeah, I know. Okay, you're just back uh, with Team USA, and we've been asking a bunch of your teammates, Mary Lake and Kennedy Eschenberg, mm-hmm. what this experience does for you individually as a volleyball player. What, what was the best thing that happened to you to help you progress as a volleyball player with playing with Team USA? So I think the best thing, it was just, it was really like just a different experience. Like we were thrown in with a bunch of different people and like we had to like on the fly, like problem solve and just all this stuff. And you're playing with such amazing players and just um, it gave me a lot of confidence and like just knowing like we're good here at BYU and like all of my teammates, they're out there like Kennedy and Mary, they're playing out with different people too. And 
um, I just, it gave me a lot of confidence. And it's, I just, what we have here at BYU and our coaching staff is just as good as like anything out there. So. Did it did it validate the program in a way where you go and you hang out with uh, you know everyone from Texas and Stanford and Nebraska and whatever? Did yeah, you like you know what we can hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know it was cool. Like because the coach for the junior national team under twenty was the Texas coach Jared Elliott, and so it was just kind of cool. Like I just we just played them and like just beating them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so yeah, it was cool just um, seeing what his coaching style was like and just comparing it like to ours and stuff like that so this BYU women's volleyball team has understandably high expectations after so many sweet 16s in a row and going to the final four and having this magical year in 2018 you lose Ronnie Jones Perry you lose your outstanding setter Lindy Haddock epic what's the biggest question mark for this team as you move forward into 2019 I think we just need to just find um, who's gonna want to fill those roles and like Heather and the rest of the coaches will know um, who wants to perform and they'll be ready. And so I just have confidence in our coaches and the rest of our players that anyone will be ready to play. And so I'm excited to see how we do. And just I hope we start. I know we will start um, very good off. So, yeah. Mary Lake was on the uh, Volleyball Nations League gold medal winning team with the senior team. Um, Does she have like topper status among all of you since she played with? the top team on the team like if she needs something do you have to do it now since she's on well, the maybe. senior like, women's I, national team i still haven't seen her since she left like she came back for a few days but i was gone you don't know Mexico. the new mary and so i'm the like gold medal mary <laughs> gold medal mary. But, <laughs> she's yeah, changed no. so much heather i'm like she's hanging out with all these olympians i'm like wow and she might be on the olympic team i know knows, right? it's really cool it's, it's really cool. cool and she's so humble about it i just yeah, she's I, really... I wish you'd just be a little less humble about it. That's what I really <laughs> – no, I'm just kidding. What did you enjoy more, um, Japan or Mexico, on your two trips? Um, so both of them are kind of different. So when we went to Japan, we were just scrimmaging, um, like, the Japanese teams that they had there. And so I feel like it's a little more, like, low-key. Like, it wasn't, like, a tournament. Like, we have to win, da, 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 all this stuff. And, like, we wanted to win a lot. And so – And Heather was your coach. And Heather was my coach. And so it was very, like, um, um, like easy – like – natural for me and so not like new group new coach just it was kind of crazy in Mexico but like super good growing experience and so I liked both and they're both really different so I'm glad that I did both what was the most memorable thing you experienced outside of volleyball in Japan and Mexico um so in Japan we would go and eat with the Japanese teams that they had there and so we would just like sit down, like it was either before or after we played, and just like we couldn't really talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why we not? Just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and so we would just like try, like use a Google Translate. But, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> there were apps where you can talk into it, and then you put it up to them, and they can listen. Yeah, right? it was it was cool. Like I was like, I've never had this experience, like just interacting with other yeah. people. No more Tower of Babel situation. You, we can actually <laughs> yeah. figure it out. How right? was the food, by the way? Oh, it was very, very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> both like places. Yeah, but it was good. Like, That's awesome. I was um, so, you, so your dad Tom played at BYU in the eighties. When, when was uh, basketball? Yeah. When, when was BYU going to be the school you attended? When did that? When did that happen? So I feel like I always kind of like knew I wanted to go to BYU, but then once I started like going through the recruiting process and like oh like talking to all these other like. Um, colleges and just like oh like I could go play anywhere I kind of really wanted and um but I just knew like BYU would be a good place for me besides just volleyball and um I just have always loved it here my parents have loved it and so I knew it'd be a great place for me so who came in second yeah yeah I'm always intrigued by this (laughs) um probably Utah Utah came yeah. in second. That's where we hope the they closest. always <laughs> go, in second. Right. Yeah. When you were in the Final Four last year, did you feel like you made the right decision, Heather? Oh, definitely, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've never seconded my decisions. So. How, how tall is your mom? My mom's 5'10". Okay, so, so she's, she's taller. Yeah. And your dad's what? 6'10". 6'10", 5'10". And you're 6'4"? Six, 6'4", four? Six, four, You six, split five. the difference. Okay, yeah. You split the difference. <laughs> I do. This may sound dumb, but hear me out. Were you always tall? Or was there a point where you had a huge growth spurt? I feel like I was always super tall. My older sister, that's only two years older than me, she's like six foot. 
and we were always kind of like the same height growing up and then i started passing her and mm-hmm. so i've always been pretty tall yeah and, and i want to mention that um in high school you played with sarah hampson i she did your, that's that is a huge <laughs> block oh my gosh yeah, that's yeah. incredible yeah you win the pregame every game yeah you walk in and they're like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, four foot. <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Heather Knighting with us on BYU Sports Nation. Outstanding player for BYU Women's Volleyball, the National Freshman of the Year. Who's the next freshman that will step up and surprise BYU Volleyball fans this season on your team? You know, we have a lot of freshmen coming in. We have a lot of pins, um, some DSs, and then a setter. And so everyone has, like, super good potential, and I'm super excited. Um, I think... Um, Kate Grimmer will do pretty good. We haven't had like a re- outside, I mean, a right side that we've recruited. And she committed when I did. She was like a freshman or something. And so uh, I'm excited to see how like she does and like if she fulfills her role or whoever comes in and just shows like they want to play. And so I'm excited to see how they come in and do. And I want them to do really well. Well, the season starts, is it one month from today? Is it August 30th? Is that? Yeah. I think that's, yeah, yeah. our first game. Boys Friday. The BYU <laughs> Friday, August 30th, Nike Boise Invitational. State. Yeah, so. Yes. And a uh, bunch of matches on BYU TV, BYU TV app this year. So that'll be exciting. Well, thanks for coming in. Let's give you the BYU Sports Nation karma. Good luck with camp, which starts on the 9th. Yes. Please Thank sign you. our flag. All right. Mind signing for sure. This? Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Heather Knighting. Can you imagine you're playing at, like, Lone Peak, no. and you're going to play Pleasant Grove, and in comes Heather Knighting and Sarah Hampson. Six, oh, man. seven, six, Crazy. five. I can't imagine doing it now. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, what the football team is doing today in prep for tomorrow's practice. And which Cougar in the minors hit another home run last night? This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on a Tuesday. It's report day for BYU football. Practice number one tomorrow. And a shout-out to today's guest, Greg Rebell and Heather Knighting. Shows on demand via the podcast and BYUSN.com, BYU TV, BYU Radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Football. Today, the football team reports for fall camp, picking up equipment and swag for the season, as well as iPads with the playbooks and film on them. Tomorrow is the first practice. Full coverage on BYU TV Sports Facebook account. Junior defensive back Austin McChesney announces via Twitter that he is retiring from football. McChesney missed some of 2016 with a torn ACL and all of 2018 with an injury. He had an interception against Cincinnati in 2016 and BYU's 20-3 win on the road. Good luck to Austin as he moves forward. Your boy Mitch Harper of KSL Sports reports three-star cornerback Eric Ellison will not enroll at BYU as originally thought this semester. Ellison signed with BYU in December. Volleyball. Brendan Sander and Price Jarman, BYU volleyball alumni. On the 12-man USA national team for the Pan American Games in Peru, Gabi Garcia-Fernandez is on the Puerto Rican team. Competition starts this week. Soccer. Incoming freshman Jamie, no relation to Jason Shepard, won the golden boot at the U-19 U.S. Youth Soccer National Championships. Cool. Cougars in the minors. Jackson Clough continues his tear. Single-A baseball in Hagerstown had a hit, two runs, and an RBI for the Suns to beat the Columbia Fireflies 5-1. to one. And Colton Shaver hit a home run for the second game in a row to help the double-A Corpus Christi Hooks take down the Springville Cardinals, Springfield Cardinals, 7-6. Colton moving on up, baby. Michael Rucker pitched two and two-thirds innings for the Tennessee Smokies, giving up only one hit to the Chattanooga Lookouts. Golf. Peter Quinn. We might have pulled the problem. Peter Quest and Rhett Rasmussen are competing at the Western Amateur in Benton Harbor, Michigan. In round one, Quest is tied for fourth at four under par. Rasmussen tees off at 120 Eastern, roughly in 24 minutes. Today's rise and shout-outs now. And, Jerem, you called him an American hero this morning, and I <laughs> could not agree more. So I am going to share my rise and shout-out with you, but I will let you read the tweet from your man, David. David Ubin, uh, uh, athletic uh, a writer for The Athletic. He might be athletic, too. On the narrative that always happens when BYU plays an unfamiliar opponent. No, having 23- and 24-year-olds on the roster is not an advantage. It's not really worth even talking about. To quote a coach I talked to a few years back, if it helped, everyone would do it. Yes, and then Thank someone you. responded to him and Thank said, you. it's amazing how this comes up every year. And then he said, every period, single, period, year, period. <laughs> 
One of my favorite things to talk about. Yes, David. Thank you. A national writer finally Someone, gets it. We should it. just get him on just he to thank him. He finally gets it. We're like, thanks. Yes. That's it. We have we no questions. Yes. We just want to thank you. We just want to. <laughs> we definitely should. Now, George is on the Desert Reference Credit you know. Listen, it's worked out. He always won so many national championships in so many sports. And recently, too. Missionaries. Come on. Question of the day on a scale of 1 to 10. How confident are you that the BYU offense can score on every drive? At Loyal to the Royal on Twitter says 10. I'm confident they can, meaning the possibility exists that they can score on every drive. Obviously they won't, but I like the mentality that every possession is an opportunity to put points on the board, even on 4th and 19 on their own two-yard line. That was presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. No time. For Jeremiah Spencer, we'll see you tomorrow.